Never lose your joy. Culture yourself as a believer. No matter the tragedy. Now, joy is not the same as happiness. You don't have to be smiling to be joyful. But eventually, joy leads to laughter. Did you get what I said? Joy is of the spirit. It's of the Holy Ghost. I'm not saying be a clown. No, there are times that tears are coming out of your eyes. And yet, you are full of joy. Joy is a shield against offense. When you have joy, it's impossible to be offended. When the devil wants to attack you, he will make sure he brings down the gate of joy. Then he can penetrate and deal with many other things in your life. Welcome to Chat Now Channel. We are glad you tuned in today to experience another life-changing encounter in God's presence. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 130, the entrance of thy word giveth life. As you listen and watch, may you experience the transformative power of God's life. I've made up my mind that I will not lose my joy. When you lose your joy, you will lose sleep. When you lose your joy, you will lose many other things. Some of you are looking by far older than your age. You are say 30, 35, but you have been mistaken for 51, 55. Why? The absence of joy is telling on your physical health. When you tell people you are 30, they say you are joking. They think you are lying. They think you are reducing your age so that you get something, maybe a job. But that is, that is really your, your age. It's just that pain and lack of joy has added an age to your life that should not be. Are we together? Someone will see you, a young lady, good afternoon, ma. And they think you're a mother of four or five children just because there's no joy. Rejoice in the Lord always and again i say rejoice someone say i rejoice Amen. prophesy say i rejoice Amen. i'm not downplaying your pain ladies and gentlemen this is how the economy of the kingdom works when you want beauty for ashes you must remain in joy joy is such a mysterious spiritual force it is the atmosphere that allows for harvest if you are not in joy, the possibility for harvest is not even there. The Bible says, they that sow in tears will reap in joy. Like saying, go and collect your food in the kitchen. You will have to enter the kitchen to pick up the food. If there is no kitchen, then the possibility for getting your meal is not there. Joy is beyond a feeling. It is a spiritual atmosphere. Like a cloud, you can step into a realm called joy and live there. Did you get what I said? That it is beyond a feeling. I feel happy. I feel joyful. You're not entirely wrong, but joy must move beyond being a feeling of, of glad tidings to an atmosphere. It's like it shields you. Someone again say, I rejoice that you walk out of this place in spite of what is happening around our nation, in spite of what is happening around the globe, find a reason to rejoice. You don't rejoice in the situation, you'll be lying. You rejoice in the God of your salvation who can change that situation. Again, say, I rejoice. So next time you go and write down the list of all the things challenging you. And while the devil wants to lie to you, you are maintaining the consciousness of your love for Jesus, maintaining hope, expecting the best of God in everything, and then holding on to that anchor of joy. Joy. When you want to turn beauty, or you want to receive beauty for ashes, never stop believing and engaging the word of god never stop believing and engaging the word of god regardless what the devil tries to tell you using your current situation never stop believing and never stop engaging the word of god don't say i prayed and it did not work so i will stop don't say i i i spoke no you never stop when you are in the midst of fire, the three Hebrew boys, remember Daniel chapter 3. You would think that because they were going to be thrown in fire, they would say, well, that's it. Their first, the first level of hope was that they would not enter the fire. But they said, even if we are there and we eventually die, oh king, we will not bow. I can imagine the Bible does not record it. But I can imagine that in the midst of that fire, maybe someone was quoting something the little they knew. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you are a shield and a defense for me. And they saw the fourth man. He just stood there. 
and the bible says they were men who the fire had no power over is someone learning second peter chapter 3 and verse 9 never stop believing and engaging the word of god second peter 3 and verse 9 give it to us media the bible says the lord is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness there is a way men count slackness after two years three years if god does not come he said god is slack but the bible says the lord is not slack concerning his promises therefore never stop it has not manifested but never stop are we together hebrews chapter 6 13 to 15 never stop for someone this is a prophetic word for when god made a promise to abraham he says because he could not swear by no greater he swore by himself saying surely blessing i will bless thee and multiplying i will multiply thee and so after he had patiently endured do you know what it means to wait for god for over 25 years if you were abraham's colleague most likely is when your children will be getting married that's when sarah a woman who should be preparing to be a grandmother that's when she was receiving her child and yet the bible says god is not slack because the one child that came was equal to a nation is someone hearing now you've trusted god for two years and you're about to write the word off no, no don't talk to me about that that's word again i'm, I'm tired I've prayed don't talk to me about giving again I don't believe it no God is not slack the Bible says so after he had patiently endured who spoke to Abraham but the Bible says the Word of God is quick and powerful so why did Abraham wait 25 years there are things we may not understand on this side of God's kingdom like why God had to wait 30 years why he had to die for three days couldn't he go to hell and finish everything in five minutes was hell so difficult that he spent three days there there are sides to this kingdom economy that is not given to us to know so that we do not be offended through our words we give god praise and exhaust the level of knowledge given to us the hymn writer says we will understand it better by and by is someone learning now because sometimes bringing foolish explanation to scripture can cause us to err in words and sin against God. There are many things that may not seem to add up yet. Why did Jesus go to the grave for three days? He healed people instantly. Where did he keep his power? Did it take him that long? What kind of battle was he fighting? Is someone learning? listen to me never stop believing and engaging the word of god and i've taught you that there are three ways to engage the word of god number one you study the word of god number two you listen to the word of god number three you declare or confess the word of god these are the three levels of engaging the word as revealed in scripture let me repeat it again that to engage the word profitably number one you study the word of God to show yourself approved unto God. Number two, you listen to the word of God because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Number three, you confess the word of God because you declare thou that ye might test be justified. If you are not studying the word of God, you will lack spiritual intelligence. If you are not listening to the word of God, faith will not be built. And if you are not confessing the word of God, you cannot partner with the spirit to create and manifest realities and possibilities in your life. You understand me so far? Shout amen. amen. Never stop believing and engaging the word of God. Never stop believing and engaging the word of God never stop believing and engaging the word of God no matter what happens I believe God's word many years ago I used to say this that God forbid but even if I die of sickness the last word that will come out of my mouth is by his stripes I am healed and I really meant what I was saying you see most believers really do not believe the word most believers are scientific Christians 
I say that to mean we are Christians whose faith surrounds logic and stops there. It shows because every time it looks like there is a bit of delayed manifestation, we fall like a pack of cards. No. Something happens to you when you are fully persuaded. Fully persuaded that God is faithful. Fully persuaded that God is able. Fully persuaded that God is loving. Hallelujah. Never stop believing and engaging the word of God. You get up in the morning in the name of jesus i decree and declare this growth is leaving my body i confess by the power of the holy spirit that by his stripes i am healed i place a demand upon the finished work of christ in calvary over this situation i release my faith in spite of this report i decree and declare that i believe the report of the lord a time will come you will feel like a fool confessing because you've been confessing for six months and your finance seem to went to to go down your your health seems to go down your children you are laying hands on your child and you are saying in the name of jesus this prodigal son will get born again by afternoon they call you that you should come and pick your child from a prison cell and once they are, they are, you hear that kind of thing the devil will say keep wasting your time i have taught you koinonia let the redeemed of the lord say so let the healed of the lord say so let the blessed of the lord say so do not let anyone make you believe that confessions of faith is gibberish now the value to confession is that it is first deposited in your heart as a revelation so for many people they just confess blindly the journey to confession starts with conviction that is within your heart are we together for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness then with the mouth confession is made unto soteria salvation if you do not believe with your heart you will just be speaking an unbelievers gibberish so you take out time to meditate on scripture until it becomes spirit and life but when that deposit is made within your spirit, you speak. The righteousness of faith speaks. The righteousness of faith speaks. It is not silent. It speaks that which God has done. It speaks that which you desire God's word to make happen in your life. What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them. The Bible says, declare ye that thou mightest be justified. Look at me. If you have stopped engaging the word of God, then you are partnering with Satan to keep those ashes until they rise to a point where they bury you yourself. Are we together now? God is coming tonight desiring to give you beauty for ashes. But you see, I have taught you that God does not do anything outside of his word. The word of God defines the jurisdiction for the administration of God's power. Let me say that again. The word of God, scripture, defines the boundary, the jurisdiction for the administration of God's power. God's power, as mighty, as infinite as it is, works only within the jurisdiction allowed by his word. Because he has exalted his word even above his reputation. Is someone learning now? So if you expect God to move superstitiously over your life, I hate to disappoint you, but you might be very disappointed. There has to be a scriptural basis for the power of God arriving in your life. Here's what Mary said. Be it unto me, not according to your power. Be it unto me, according to your word. Be it unto me according to your word, not according to your power. The energizing was sponsored by his power, but that power was carried through the tray of his word. I've taught you that the word of God is like a tray. If I ask you to bring water or bring a meal for me, if you truly honor me, you will not carry water and put it at your back pocket and remove it and give me. You will place that water on a tray place your plates there that tray is the word of god with it comes god's power with it comes god's favor so when you want god to bring his power his favor the vehicle the tray that conveys that power to you is his word if you ignore the word of god you are ignoring the possibility for change if you are ignoring the word of god you are ignoring the potential for change 
whether it is to turn your water to wine whether it is to replace ashes for beauty you will still need his word nevertheless at thy word and he said come and he began to walk is someone learning now apostle i don't have a job use that time to learn his word use that time to hear his word use that time to rewrite your possibilities in the spirit apostle i'm i'm in the midst of pain and i cannot find comfort anywhere get the word of god rather than hearing nonsense get the word of god rather than going on social media and tear the remaining part of your faith into many slices there are people who carry their pain their faith is on reserve and then they go to social media and they don't use the content properly they listen to nonsense for 30 minutes and at the end of it there is zero faith it was on low but by the time social media is done with you zero faith and the devil says finish up because i'm coming that's what he's waiting for faith is a product of god's word faith is a product of god's word you ignore the word of god you have ignored the potential for change when we talk about beauty for ashes we say that with respect to the word of god john chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god are you learning and the word was god the bible says the same was with god in the beginning i like verse 3 the bible says through him all things were made by him and without him outside of him outside of him ignoring him was not anything made ignoring the word nothing can be made hallelujah i speak over someone tonight whatever has drained your passion for the word of god maybe anger maybe offense maybe pain maybe tragedy maybe prolonged situations you carry your bible in the morning and you just throw it back because quite honestly you are not interested in this church thing again you carry a message to listen to and you just delete it and you're not ready you throw away your phone in the name of jesus let passion for the word be reignited in your spirit man let passion for the word be reignited in the name of jesus blessed by the message you just watched let us know what stood out to you in the comment section you can also support our channel by liking and sharing our videos so more people like you will be able to watch these powerful messages we celebrate you and see you in our next video thank you